Thomas Litchfield. I'm the principal here at Hyman Middle School, and I can't say enough how happy I am to see so many Hyman students, Marvel students, and parents that have come back for an evening event. This is our first Huntley Parent University event of the year, and this is a great turnout. Hi, this is Ben from Principal at Marlowe. Um, first off, we would love to thank Mr. Litchfield and the Heineken staff for including our school in this evening. So, thank you for everyone coming. It's an important topic. I got the opportunity to come and see and speak to the Heineken students earlier this morning, and you're in for a treat. So, enjoy. So, Terrence has spoken to thousands of students, hundreds of buildings. He takes this role very seriously, but he made a lot of connections with students today. I've heard from many families already via email about how the student couldn't stop talking about that presentation when they got home and the messages that he had were very simple. And he said that it's a different presentation tonight, similar messages, but he knows that he has families in the audience. So, big round of applause for Terrence Kelly. Thank you so much for letting me be here in your guys' community today. I do not know uh, what happened when your student got home, but I'm pretty sure it was something like this crazy black dude was at my school and we got to come see this. So, I appreciate that. But here's the thing. Uh, we have to make sure we have some fun because I know, man, you're looking at me way too serious right now. I feel really scared just looking at you. Don't worry, we're, we're going to have a good time. I promise, I promise. So, I want to make sure that we're all comfortable because I understand some of you are coming out of work and you're just like, I don't have time to come do this. I'm really tired. I want to walk to the office. I get it. I understand. So, I don't need you guys to loosen up because I know you come in here with baggage. Maybe some of you, you're coming from your job and everybody always has that one person at their job. You're like, and they talk to me one more time. So, we got to make sure we shake all that off. So, I need everybody to stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Yep, you sir. Yeah, stand up. All right. Now, for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to need you, and I'll tell you when to go. I'm going to need you to say hi and welcome to three people in this room that are not people that you know. Now, I know some of you are like, Terrence, I'm 35 years old. I'm 37. I'm older than you, so shut up and listen. So, you can do this. I did this all day with your students, and so we're going to get to know each other because we're going we're gonna to be talking about some things tonight, and it's going to get really close. So you guys got to at least say hi to somebody. All right? On the count of three. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Students, if you think your parent is the coolest parent in the room, I need 
want you to grab them and you're going to bring them up here right now. I need the first five and there will be some type of prize, okay? There will be some type of prize. I haven't thought about it yet, but there will be. Okay, we got one, we got two. Wow, there's a lot of ladies. What about all the cool, okay, cool dads? Okay, okay. You know what? We'll take the whole family. Right? So here we're going through. We're going to spread out just a little bit. Spread out just a little bit. Wow, okay, you gotta you got tell me now, is this all one family, or is this two different things? Okay, I did not know, and it was, we got a lot of different things going on. Okay, wow, this is a lot, okay. So here's what we're going to do. In order to be the coolest parent in this room, I have learned something. I have spoke to over, last year I spoke to over 100,000 students. And I have learned the one thing that makes you cool that's so cute. Right, I'll let you so, the thing that makes you cool as a parent is you have to know your music. Okay? So, we're going to play a game, and it's a team finish the lyric. So, here's what we're going to do I'm going to go down the line, and DJ D. Young, can you guys give it up first? She's been helping me out all day today. Let it down the tracks. So, since we have so many, this is what we're going to do. We're going to play a song. And we're not only going to play a little bit of it. I need one parent to say what the name, or, or okay, between the two of you, between the parent and the student, one of you have to say the name of the song, and another one has to sing a lyric to the song, okay? Students, you cannot do both. Parents, you cannot do both. One, okay? One, you guys got to decide. Okay, you're saying the name, I'm saying the lyric. And if you do not get it, don't get me wrong. And like, we, we are all winners, okay? You know, all of you, are, you're special, you are awesome, but also in life, there are some losers. So you're gonna have to sit down if you don't get it, okay? Just saying, just being real with you, okay? All right. We're going to start over here because, of course, we are gentle people up here. And so we're going to come and, our, okay, is this all one family? Well, I'm like, you're, you're just a family that can fit in anyway. That's how it is. All right. So I need the name, your name, and what grade your students in. My name is Gloria, and I'm in sixth grade. All right. Look, well, give it up for him. All right. Are you guys ready? Now, if they don't get it, nobody blurt it out, because if they don't get it, we're going to go on to the next one, and we're going to save that song. So, don't blurt it out. No cheat. No cheat. Sir, 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 sir. No cheat. Okay? I got you. got you. Okay. Let's hear that first song. You got to turn it up. All right, we're going to cut. We're going to cut. What's the name of the song? You don't know the name? Do you know the name? Okay, I am sorry, I'm sorry. Can you guys give me a big round of applause? You guys can have a I'm going to have to go quick, I'm going to have to go quick. You don't have to play, we'll go to another song, okay? Remember, it's your choice. I don't know even what she's going to play. But I do know it's going to be something. You guys are going to know this, okay? So remember, one of you have to know the name. And somebody has to say the lyric. And I'm looking at you, little boy, okay? You're part of this. <laughs> Alright, let's hear that song. I don't even know what she's going to play, 
but I know you're going to get it. Okay? All right, let's hear it. Alright, 
I don't know why, but I feel like she has a lot of musical knowledge. Okay, I don't know what it is. Great. Oh, then you're, you have to do the lyric then. Okay. All right, let's hear it. We can't play too much of that because that's a really well-known song. Or maybe not as well known as I thought. Do you know one of the two? I'm sorry, I can't let you go with that. I'm sorry. Give you guys a good round of applause. The song's way too well known for me to just let you go with what the effect. So, okay, here it is. You guys can do this, all right? The power of the beard is going to help you out on this one, all right? Let's hear it. Sure. One person has to know the name, other one has to know the lyric. 
You tell me what you know. Better now, right, right, right. Uh, no, 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 no,
feed herself so she had to get a job. And plus, her mom, she wanted to make sure she got the message that she's not a baby anymore. And so she just told her, I'm not going to hug you. I'm not going to kiss you because that's what babies need. And you're not a baby anymore. It's time for you to grow up and start acting like it. And so she began to tell us that <clears throat> she would watch her mom go to work every day. And before her mom went to work, she would sit in front of her mirror and she had a routine. She would put on her makeup and then she would take out some lipstick, put it on, and then she took out some tissue, wiped off the extra lipstick, she threw the tissue in the garbage, and she went to work. And I will never forget this girl telling this story. And all of a sudden, she just began to tear up. And she goes, one day, I waited, and I watched her really, really close. I saw her put on her makeup, and then I saw her take out that lipstick, and she put it on, and she was like, I remember even seeing it now. She took that tissue off, she wiped off the extra lipstick, she threw the tissue in the garbage, and she went for work. And she goes, as soon as my mom closed the door, I went back into her room, and I went to that garbage can, and I pulled out that tissue. And she goes, now, every single time I want to think that somebody loves me, I pull out the tissue, and I put it to my face, and I pretend it's my mom kissing me. Telling me that she loves me. And the whole point of that story was sometimes in life we think we deserve garbage love. Because for that, for that girl, it wasn't a hard man. She didn't say, oh, this is so unfair for me. She generally thought that's just how life is. But today, her students got reassured. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what kind of grades you get. Nobody deserves garbage love. And you deserve to be loved fully for who you are. And don't accept anything less. And even for you parents and adults in this room, I know how life can get. And you can get used to having less. And we sometimes mask that as it's my responsibility and I'm just fat sacrificing for my kids. But you have to understand that if you continually sacrifice for your kids yourself, then you are not going to have anything else to give. So you have to make sure that you have self-care and you have to know that you are loved fully as well. Don't let your job, don't let some broken relationship tell you any different from that. Because if we want healthy students, you have to be a healthy parent. Who's the, who said that story? Man, it's really hard now. I'm like, hey, you guys over there? And then I'm like, okay, you gotta cry right now. I'm gonna do this. But this is, this is how the assembly went, right? Because I can't be serious all the time. Because, look at me. So, it's this constant, because, I don't know, I've had problems. All right, one more story. Uh, okay, yes, yes. So what? What did she say? Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, man. All right, we're just going to have to, we're just getting into this now. We're going to get real serious. Okay, so uh, one of the stories that I told to the sixth grade, because the reason why I tell different stories for different grades is because when you go into a school, for me, I never want to assume that every single school is the same, and every single student deals with the same thing. And so in the sixth grade, I just really felt like there was uh, Kind of like, you know how students sometimes become callous or, or parents, you know how sometimes you're like trying to get something out of your kid and they're just stone cold and like, I don't care, whatever, whatever. And you're like, this is so, like, I want to just jump out of the window right now. You have to care about something. And so for the sixth grade today, I don't know why, but I kind of felt that way. And so today, I usually, for a sixth grade, I don't usually like tell like these these hard-hitting stories because I want to keep it light and I want to have fun, but for some reason, I felt like that was not necessary today. And so I told the story, and matter of fact, that was the first time I told that story at a school. 
Um, so, long story short, um, I get the opportunity to travel around, and there's this one time for this assembly, my friends and I, uh, the assembly was supposed to be on a Friday. And things came up, our schedule's been in line, and I was like, you know what, why don't we just push it to Monday? School was like, yeah, okay, that works. Uh, so, that day on Monday, when it came to be, my friend, he came on the campus of that school, and it was like chaos. Like kids were just huddled over, kids over in this corner were crying, and it was just like, what is going on? And the minute he came on the campus, the principal found us, and he goes, can you follow me to my office? And we're like, whoa, what is happening? And so my friend, he sat down in the chair, and the principal goes, um, Friday, every single time we have an assembly, there is always a student ambassador. And that student ambassador always is the one that showcases the speaker around and it's there to help get him lunch. And he goes, that was supposed to be Brian. And he goes, but today they found Brian's body by a tree. And it was one of those moments I'll never forget because it was in that time I said, we're too late. And you never want that feeling of being too late. And one of the reasons why I take my job so seriously is because going to an assembly, even though it's just a, a school assembly, I know that we're always there to save at least one life. Because out of a room full of people, and I know even now, there's somebody here that feels hopeless. And sometimes we do things out of hopelessness that have an effect that lasts forever. And for that moment, for that day, it is now a constant reminder we're not too late. Today is going to be the day that we save someone else's life. And for me, I know that I, I am just one person, or my friends and I, when we go someplace, we're only there for that day. And so after that day, it's like, man, I hope everything's going to be okay. And after a while, I, I can't do that anymore. And I want to make sure as the assembly is going on, a lot of times people ask me, like, why do you tell so many stories about other people? And it's like, it's simple, because it's not about me. Like, I want to make sure students know, like, I might have just said a story that got your attention, but there are people that want to help you after I leave. And that's why I think it is so important that you are here right now. I don't know what type of parent you think you are, but the fact that you are here right now says that you are a good parent and you're doing a great job. I know life can make it seem like that you're not, but you can tell not every single parent is in this room right now. And some of you had students that didn't even go to the assembly today and you are here. You are a great parent. And your student came home and they brought you here, and they might have said my name, but they brought you here because they care about you as well. They may not say it, especially when they're yelling at you, they're like, mm, you might, I'm gonna have to get you out of this house. But trust me, you're doing a good, good job. And in order to make a community work, we need everybody together. And in order to make a community happen, we need homes and we need parents like you. And sometimes as a parent, it gets really hard because you always feel like you are saying no to your kids. They always are asking for something crazy 
And even though I'm a parent of two, and I haven't been a parent that long, my oldest little girl, her name is Gracie, and she's seven, and already, every single day, I'm like, you only talk to me when you're asking for things. This is ridiculous. Stop asking for a dog. It's not going to happen. And so it gets really easy to say no all the time. But as parents, there are a couple things that we can do to say yes. For number one, I think we can say yes to listening. Here's the thing. Uh, for my little Gracie, her being said, it was a couple years ago. And I'll never forget, it was on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day fell on a Sunday that year. And so my wife, we know that we're busy on uh, Sundays and whatnot. And so we celebrated Valentine's Day sometime during the week. And so I'll never forget, I'm sitting down Sunday, I'm thinking, I did my husband duty, everything is great, I'm awesome, boom. I'm sitting on the couch, next thing I know, my wife comes over and she's like, you know what Terrence, uh, I know Gracie's only three, four years old, but uh, you should take her out for Valentine's Day. And I was like, oh snap, I'm going to take my little girl out for Valentine's Day. I was like, I'm going to be the first one to do that for her. So I'll never forget, I got off the couch, I was like, hey, little girl, you get down here. And she comes down and she's like, what daddy? I said, hey, you go put your best dress on because your dad is taking you out. She's like, yay! And she runs upstairs and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. What am I going to do now? And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, you know what? Valentine's Day, every single day needs flowers. And so I jump into my car and then I'm thinking to myself, as I'm driving, very real thought, where am I going to get flowers on Valentine's Day? This is ridiculous. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe the grocery store. They always have some crazy assortment of flowers. And so I go into the grocery store and I saw like all, they, only, they didn't even have that many flowers. Matter of fact, they had one rose in there and it looked like somebody put it in their mouth and they're like, mm -hmm. and they put it back. But I was like, that's the only one. So I took that, I got her a card and I remember I'm looking for cards. I was like, what type of card did you get somebody that can't read? And so I looked and there was this one card in there and that stickers in there and it said happy valentine's day because i want to stick to you i was like boom that's the car and so i got the card i got the rose i went into the line i put it down the clerk she looks at me she goes looks like somebody forgot about valentine's day i was like well you shut your mouth and mind your business i gotta go so i get home i walk into the house and i'm like okay i gotta get dressed so i'm going upstairs i'm getting my suit i got my tie and of course my little girl she's like daddy i'm ready and i'm like man this little girl's pushing and so i go downstairs my wife even recorded it i come downstairs i got my suit on she's wearing her purple sparkly dress I got the flower in one hand, the card in the other. I get down on my knee and I said, happy birthday, baby. And she goes, is this for me? And she took the rose and she smelled it. I was like, you probably don't want to do that. That, that might have diseases. And so I was like, you also, I got you a card. And she opened it up and she goes, stickers. And I was like, there's some words in there, but that's okay. You're happy. And so I was like, you ready to go? And she goes, yes. And so she took the rose, she took the car, she looked at my wife, and she goes, don't take it, they're mine. I was like, wow, she really knows what she wants. And so we get in the car, and then all of a sudden it hits me again, I have no idea where I'm going. I'm like, okay, where do you take a four-year-old for Valentine's Day? And I'm like, oh snap, you know what? I'll take her to Pizza Hut. Now, I didn't take her to Pizza Hut because I'm a cheap date. I took her because she likes pizza. And so we get there, I park the car, I get out, I open the door for her, and then as she gets out the car, I grab her hand, and she goes, Daddy, why are we holding hands? And I said, look, if a man doesn't hold a hand with you when he's around you, that means he is not happy to be with you. And if he ain't happy to be with you, then you don't need him. She's like, okay. Now I'm telling you, like for me, I'm like, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna set the bar pretty high for my daughter. Because if any guy tries to date my daughter, she's gonna compare him to me. And I wanna make sure there ain't nobody better than that. So I got there, I'm holding her hand. We walk in there, and of course the hostess, she goes, Oh, are you guys on a date? And she's like, Yep. And she's like, let me show you to her seat. So I let her go, and then my daughter, she turns around, she grabs my hand, she tugs on the hostess, and she goes, I'm holding my daddy's hand because I'm proud to be with him. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, that's my baby. And so we had the best dinner at pizza. We played with Legos. It was great. That night, I tucked her into bed, and I put her, and I got the blanket and everything. I go, happy birthday.
a happy Valentine's, baby. I love you. And she goes, I love you too, Daddy. Turned off the light, closed the door, and I was like, man, I just dated Tanner the mess out of that day. I am a good parent. Now, day number two came, and it was like a day out of hell, okay? I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, she must have got possessed or something. Because I'll never forget, my kids, they know exactly what their dad does. He travels around and he goes to schools to tell kids that they're loved. And so I had to leave that very next day. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this day very special for Gracie. I'm going to cook her her favorite breakfast. I'm going to drop her off at the daycare. And I'm going to pick her up. We're going to have an awesome dinner. It's going to be a great way to say bye for a couple days. Wake her up. I go in her room. I'm like, okay, Gracie, it's time to get up. And she goes, no. I'm like, okay. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you five minutes to roll on to the other side of the bed, and I'll meet you downstairs. And so, of course, I went downstairs. I made her this breakfast, and she comes downstairs. She just sits down in the chair, and she crosses her arms. I go, here you go. And she goes, I don't want to eat that food. I'm like, uh, okay. I was like, daddy's going to calm down, and you're a little cranky. I get it. So let's go to daycare. So we're driving to get daycare, and I can tell she's just, I don't even know what she's doing. And so finally, we get to daycare, and I'm like, all right, Gracie, I'll see you later. And she didn't say anything. I'm like, man, this is jacked up. I don't know what's happened. And so I was like, you know what? Everything's going to be better once I pick her from daycare. And so I pick her up, and I walk through the door of her daycare. This little girl walks past me like I'm the invisible man, like I'm her Uber driver or something. I'm like, girl, what is wrong with you? She gets in the car, buckles herself up, and just looks out the window. And I'm like, okay, maybe she's a little angry right now. I don't know what's going on. So I was like, I'm going to go in. I'm going to make her dinner. This is going to be okay. So I let her go, and she's watching uh, like Paw Patrol or one of those other shows I want to punch in the face. And so I make her her dinner and everything, and I go, Gracie, it's time to eat. She comes over, she sits down, she goes, I don't want that. I go, okay, you're testing your dad's patience now. And she goes, get that out of my face. True story, took the plate, whoosh. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, little girl, you are about to get in trouble. And at this point in time, I'm getting for real, okay? I'm in her face like, you need to stop it. Once again, true story. This little girl took her hand and slapped it across the face. And at this point, I think I blacked out. Because I was like, oh! I was like, no, you know what? You need to go upstairs. And so she gets up, she goes upstairs. Now, I'm pretty calm most of the time. And I don't have a lot of things that make me really angry. But one of my pet peeves is when people slam doors. I hate it when people slam doors. And I'm saying to myself, okay, she better not slam that door. I hear her, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, she better not slam that door. Next thing I know, boom! I was like, oh! I was like, that's it, I'm gonna go get her. And so I go upstairs, I open up the door, I was like, look, little girl, you're in my house, you don't slam doors. And she goes, I don't care, I don't wanna be here. I go, if you keep on yelling at me, I'm gonna, you're gonna get in trouble. And at this point, I'm like, I don't know what to do. She's four years old. What am I supposed to do to get her in trouble? And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take away all your blankies. She goes, fine, I don't want my blankie. And I go, fine, this is my blankie. And I go downstairs, shut the door, sit down on the couch. My wife is sitting right there. And she goes, tough day, huh? I go, I don't know what's going on. I think she's just got her period. I don't know what's happening. She goes, Terrence, calm down. Let me go see what's going on. So I hear my wife go upstairs. She opens the door. I hear Gracie crying. Next thing you know, wife comes back downstairs, sits down on the couch. She goes, you need to go back upstairs and talk. I was like, no, she's laughing at my face. She needs to come to me. And she goes, Terrence, go talk to her. So I get up, I'm like, man, this is ridiculous. And she goes, Terrence, take the blanket. I go, no, this is my blanket. She goes, Terrence, take the blanket. So I took the blanket, I'm like, this is, I can't believe this is happening right now. And I opened the door, and Gracie's sitting there, and she's crying. And at this point, I'm like, Grace, what is going on? We had such an awesome day the other day. What's happened today? And then she turns around to me, and she goes, do you love those other kids more than you love me? And I'm like, Okay. I looked at her and I said, there 
there's no other kid I love more than you. And the reason why your dad does what he does is because I can't imagine there are kids out there that don't know that there's a dad that loves them like I love you. And that's when it hit me. My, my girls, they don't want me to be a perfect parent. They just want me to be me. And things happen from day to day, but they just want me. And for all my parents to hear, you don't have to be perfect. Matter of fact, trust me, you're talking to somebody who has made a lot of mistakes, but my kids just want me. I have talked to teenagers for years, and every single time, they always say, does my parents love me? And I am somebody, I don't know what's going on in your family, but I promise you, I never, ever put down a parent. I'm like, I don't know your parent, but I do know that you care for me. Doesn't matter who you are in this room, doesn't matter how much you think you've messed up. Your kid still just wants you. So just say yes to listen to him. That's it. Matter of fact, there was this one time, I probably shouldn't tell you this story, but I thought I'm great, great dad, right? I don't know why I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to you now. <laughs> and uh, there's this one time my wife, she left me alone, and like, I had to like actually parent by myself for a while. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna give my little girl the best day ever. And so I'm like, all right, you wanna go have some ice cream? She's like, yeah, ice cream! And I'm like, okay, you wanna go see a movie? And she's like, yeah, movie! And so after everything was done, I was like, all right, we gotta go home. And she goes, hey, I wanna go to the park. And I'm like, uh, it's like nine o'clock at night. We can't go to the park in the dark. That just doesn't work. She goes, no, I wanna go to the park. I go, well, I don't wanna go to the park in the dark. She goes, I wanna go. I was like, okay, I'll drop you off at the park in the dark. You can go to the park by yourself. She goes, okay. I'm thinking, I'm being an awesome parent. I'm about to teach her a valuable lesson. Listen to your dad. And so I get there, park the car, open up the door for her. I'm like, all right, you can go to the park in the dark. She's like, okay. She gets out the car, shuts the door. I'm like, okay, I gotta make this real. And so I begin to pull out of the parking spot. And I begin to go, I know I'm not leaving, but I turn around. This little girl is running towards the car and she is bawling. And in that moment, I was like, ooh, I just made a counseling appointment right there. <laughs> but we all mess up and it happens. But we also have to say yes to actively being involved in our child's life. I'll never forget my mom, she always used to tell me that it takes a whole village to raise one kid. And my mom was one of the most annoying people I thought. And one of the things that my mom used to do, she's like an overly loving person. And so every single Christmas, my mom, we would like always have these gifts and she would buy extra gifts just, to, just in case people came over and she could give them a gift. Well, my friends and I, we always had a tradition that we were going to see a movie on all the Christmases because the best movies come out on Christmas. And so my friends, we would always talk about where are we going to meet up? And then my friends were always like, yeah, Terrence, we're going to meet up at your house. And then I started to notice, I'm like, man, y'all just want to meet up at my house because you want some free gifts. So my mom is a couple of months later, I'm having a good time. I invite my friend over and we're just chilling out. All of a sudden my mom comes downstairs and she's just like, I just thank you so much for coming and, and playing with my parents. I'm like, okay, you don't need to say thank you like I'm some bad person to play with. And she goes, I got you something. My mom runs upstairs and she hands her this gift wrap thing and this kid opens it up and it's a couple pairs of socks. All of a sudden, this kid, my friend, begins to cry. And I'm like, those socks are not that good. <laughs> Come to find out, his family just got evicted from his house, and he didn't have any of his clothes, and him getting those stocks was a sign to him that he was going to be okay, and that's what it hit me. My mom didn't do those things just because she was some crazy mom. 
my mom got involved because she knew that those kids that I hang out with were going to have an effect on me. And instead of waiting for them to have an effect on me, she wanted to make sure that she had an effect on them. And there was a rule in her house. If you come to our house, you are my child now. And while you are here, I'm going to treat you like my child. Matter of fact, my, one of my friends got drowned every time I came over. I was like, that's Jack, no. You probably don't want to come back over. But my mom said yes to getting involved. And she did not let me just live in my own world. But she became a part of it. So we can always make sure that we get involved. And we say yes to actively being involved. And the last thing that we can say yes to, how are we doing? Good? Okay. One of the last things that we can actively do is say yes to showing that we care. Lots of things in life come up and it's really easy to just go from day to day to day to routine, routine, routine. But you have to stop and take a moment to just say, you know what? I'm going to show you that I love you. And this is beyond gifts but it's just showing them that you care. And sometimes all that takes is a hug. Now today, what we did was we did something called a dad hug. You guys are being very respectful. I appreciate that, even though I just pointed you out. Thank you. <laughs> today we did something called a dad hug. And if you don't know what a dad hug is, dad hug says, I love you, and you don't have to do anything for me. Dad hug says, I think you're great, you don't have to be the superstar athlete. You don't have to get straight A's. I just think you're great because you're you. And it doesn't matter whether it's a dad hug, mom hug, or a friend hug. Everybody can get that. And I'll never forget the very first time I did that. I was at a school in New Orleans. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden they like hit me. Like, you know what? You need to talk about your dad. And so I began to talk about how my dad, uh, he, he, my parents got divorced when I was like two or three years old. And I didn't get to see my dad a lot because my dad was out of home. And at the time, my little girl, Gracie, was like six months old. And she was like always on my mind. And so I wanted to make sure that there were kids that knew that they were loved just like my Gracie's love. And so I'm up there and I'm going, hey, uh, maybe for you it's a dad hug, maybe for you it's a mom hug, maybe for you it's a friend hug. I don't know what it is, but if you know you need that hug right now, I want you to come on down and I want you to give a hug for me because I get the best dad hugs ever. Sure enough, all these students started to come down, right? Now, the very first person I went to go give a hug to was this girl. In a minute, I put my arms out like this, she puts her hand out and she goes, stop. Before you hug me, you have to know. She goes, when I was seven years old, my dad, he began to hurt me. And she goes, he hurt me until I was 13 years old. And the only reason why he stopped was because he's in prison. She goes, that's the only kind of love I've ever known in my life. And so now, I saw myself on the street because that's all I know. She goes, if you hug me, you will be the very first man to touch me and not want anything from me. So I took that girl and I gave her the biggest hug that I could. And she sat there and she just cried and cried on her shoulder. There were hundreds of kids lined up to get this hug. But this little girl right here did not know that she did not deserve to be hurt. She did not know that it doesn't matter what somebody else has done to her, she was still special to me. And so I looked at her and I go, I am sorry for what has happened, but the reason why I'm here is because I'm a dad. And for this moment right now, I love you like a dad. And I want you to make sure that you go tell a teacher and you go and you tell an adult and let them know that when you need that dad hug or that mom hug or that friend hug, you make sure you go get it, okay? She goes, okay. Six months later, I get a message from this girl. She goes, Terrence, I don't know if you remember me. I'm like, of course I remember you. 
she was um, happy that day. I found and I talked to uh, a woman that goes to my, my school, and I get to go into her office every single day. And before the school day starts, she goes, I get my mom hug from her. Because I stopped selling myself on the street because I know now what real love is. Doesn't matter what's going on. I'm telling you, always stop and say yes to showing the kids that you love. I'm probably the most annoying parent on the planet. I will be, I will get in bed with my girls and I will hold them and they'll be like, Daddy, you're all sweaty. I'm like, I know, but I love you. I'll turn off the TV, I will interrupt the show. And I'll be like, come on, give your dad a hug. And they're like, Dad, you need to get out of my face. I want to watch some more, uh, oh, my girls are into Pokemon. That's very good, I don't know. Always make time to show your students that you love them. And I know, it is about that time to go. But before you guys go, you have to remember that sometimes, even though it may not seem like it right now, this is life and death. And maybe it's not physical death, but it is life and death in a lot of different terms. And when I think about that, I think of a story that happened during the Vietnam War. Because see, they're having uh, so many uh, soldiers coming off the field of battle that they couldn't like really take time to figure out which soldiers they're going to work on. And so what they did was they developed this ribbon system. And this ribbon system, what that means is this. The doctor, he would take a look at you, and he would look at you for maybe a minute or so, and he would decide if you're going to get a black ribbon or a red ribbon. Red ribbon meant that they're going to wheel you off into a room they're going to work on you and make sure that you look better. But that black ribbon meant that they're going to wheel you off into a different room and they're going to let you sit there and die with other soldiers. And so these nurses, they would follow these doctors around. And so one day, as all these soldiers are coming off the field of battle, this doctor, he's going around and he's just like, okay, that's a red ribbon, black ribbon, black ribbon, red ribbon, black, black, black. And so this nurse, she's trying to keep up with what he's saying. And so she's tying all these different colored ribbons. And then finally, they get to one soldier. The doctor doesn't even give him like 50 seconds. He just looks at him for 10 and he goes, that's a black ribbon. Walks on. The nurse reaches in her pocket. She takes that black ribbon and as she begins to tie it, that soldier goes, Stop! I know what that means. Please don't tie that ribbon on. I know what it means. And she goes, I'm sorry. I can't. This was made the doctor. And he goes, Please, ma'am, don't tie that ribbon on me. So she took that black ribbon and she took a red one and she put it on him and she goes, Don't tell anybody I changed your ribbon. They wheeled him off into a room, and after a while, that woman, she couldn't, she couldn't just continue to put on these black ribbons, and so she could just go around and secretly start to switch people's ribbons. And then finally, word started to spread around camp that somebody was changing the ribbons. This was a difficult fight. You would get fired right away if they knew you were the ribbon changer. And so one day, word got out. They called all the nurses into a tent, they all filed in, and up front was this podium. Nobody was standing behind it, and the nurses, they all came in, and they just sat. And the, the guys, they let them sit for a while because they wanted them to get nervous. They wanted them to get scared. And then finally, one decorated soldier comes up, an older guy, he gets behind the podium, doesn't even give a greeting. He just goes, who changed the ribbons? Nobody said anything. He waited. Looked around again and he goes, Who changed the ribbons? And that nurse, knowing it was her, she stood up and raised her hand. And the next thing you know, the social person said, Thank you. You saved my son's life. Thank you. Each and every one of us in this room, you can be a ribbon changer. Sometimes all it takes is that moment. That you give someone a hug and you let them know that, hey, I'm here for you. So here's what I want to do. Students, listen to me. I am here.
because I'm a parent. But I am not a perfect parent. I mess up all the time. And there are times that my, my kids get mad at me. There have been times that I've been yelled at. There have been times I've been told I'm being unfair. But I love my little girls like that. I will do anything for them. I am telling you right now, the parent that is sitting next to you, they love you. So, right now, I'm going to ask all the parents to stand up. If you're a parent in this room, stand up. Thank you. 